Review and approve the minutes of September 13, 2016. Do you want to have any questions? They've been moved. Do I have a second? Second. Yeah. All those in favor or discussion? Sorry. All those in favor? Opposed? Unanimous. Financial statements, Patty? Okay, so I emailed you mm -hmm. the um, September report. <laughs> Finally. Um, we're still working out some kinks with the rollover with the infinite divisions, and they will be corrected next month. I will get those completed. Um, you are so you have signed 24 warrants tonight, totaling one million five hundred ninety-seven three hundred eighty-eight dollars and thirty-five cents. Um, the only other thing I wanted to report back on was the uh, Madam Chair asked that we uh, contact our auditor and um, talk about signing warrants. And lo and behold, the governor, in his infinite wisdom, passed the Municipal Modernization Act, which now allows school committees to delegate one member to review and approve bills or payment warrants with a report provided at the next meeting. Currently, a board or committee heading a department may delegate authority to approve payrolls to a member, and a regional school committee may designate a subcommittee to approve. Now we can go to one person, and that is what Mr. Scanlon and I feel, that that's what you wish to do. We can bring forth some language for a vote on next month's agenda. The law does not go into effect till November 9th, uh, 90 days after it was signed by the governor, which was, I believe, August. So, it would go from all the signing to just one person signing? Correct, and that one person would give a report at the at the, at the meeting Whoa. about the warrants that were signed. How are you liking that, Bob? Yeah, hi, Bob. Well, I think, you know, one's fine, but, you know, I, it's better to have more people. But you would give a report. I would give a report. We'd have to so, vote you in, but I'm thinking, anybody opposed I don't to that? Think that <laughs> Do you want to take a free vote? I don't, is that, are you proposing that we, that we no longer look at warrants? People? No, no, you can look at them, but, all no, we, I, I know, but that, legally all we have to do is have one person look at them and right. report to us on them. It would become part of our meeting. Have you so, found looking at warrants useless, personally? Um, no, not when I do it with Bob or with Andrea Lamas when she tells me how. You have to be taught how to look at a warrant, um, sure. but I think it's tedious and uh, I think it's a thankless job. And I would like to have I mean, one person or a committee look at them. That's why we ask that question. Because we've caught stuff that's been useful. I mean, to mm -hmm. you know, caught stuff is the wrong word, but we've. I mean, it's been useful to look at those things at the beginning of every meeting. And you still get them, but the fact that right. Bill, you're looking at them after the fact, fact that the checks are already are gone. Right, right, right. Yeah, which yeah. is not supposed right. to be the way it gotcha. is. Gotcha. So now we we'll have one committee member that will look at these warrants okay. and sign off prior to the checks. So if there is an issue, we pull the check. Right, and we're, we legal. We're, we're legal, and that's what I was concerned with, is that okay. we're not, we're signing these after the fact, and it's kind of ridiculous. So this will put us, but we'll have to, they'll write up some language, and then we'll talk about it in November. Okay, thank you so much. That's excellent, I love it. I like being legal. Did we have any other questions? Or you are done, Patty? I'm sorry. I'm done. Okay, let's move on. Any questions? Public comment? Do you want to have a comment or are you just waiting? No. Hi, how are you? Good. Um, report, Student Advisory Council. So I told her that she could come if she wants, but or she could stay home because of the craziness of this evening. So we will see how we go. I think, next Who do we have? Yeah. And although she actually went out for a battalion with my son. Oh, okay. So, <laughs> so, <laughs> so yes. she totally stayed home. She, be, she said, forget she it. She said, yeah. yeah. Smart move. Okay, so but next month she'll be here in Yes. Denver. I think they're rotating, right? Okay, we have yeah, no, no unfinished business, um, new business, the uh, student trip, the eighth grade trip to Washington. So yes, we have another Smith taking the trip to Washington. <laughs> 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 You can come right up here. Come right up here. All right, this is Jason Smith. He's our eighth grade team leader. Hi, everybody. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you for having me. Thanks for taking a couple minutes. I am thrilled to be uh, representing the 8th grade team of teachers tonight and uh, getting excited about the 25th annual trip to Washington, D.C. And as I think a lot of you know, it's, uh, it's a tradition. It 
it's a bit, a bit of a rite of passage. The kids look forward to it. The kids talk about it for years afterwards, right up to senior year and graduation as, as one of the best events of their career here at Frontier. Um, it ties in with our curriculum, with the U.S. history, of course, and our civics program as part of my course in U.S. history, and uh, as well as the unit in English that all the kids participate in uh, regarding the Holocaust. And uh, so we pay a visit and a, a long visit and uh, an intensive study at the United States Holocaust Memorial Museum. Uh, we're also looking forward this year to going to the brand new Smithsonian Museum of African American History. Uh, so I think the kids are already excited to know that they're going to be among the first, hopefully among the first uh, eighth graders to visit that. What sounds to be an amazing museum. Uh, it is an expensive trip. It keeps going up and up year after year. This year it's been priced out uh, with the same company we've been using for years. Uh, it's $695 per student. Um, obviously, it's a lot of money, and there are two mechanisms in place that we've used uh, for quite a few years now to help with that. And we have the annual fish fry. Uh, and that's coming up October 29th, and that is specifically to raise money for the scholarship account to help the kids who, and the families who may be in need. It's on a case-by-case -case basis, and um, but uh, that event usually raises in the thousands of dollars, and, and it builds up our scholarship account. What time will that be held, Mr. Smith? Four to seven on October 29th. That's a Saturday. Saturday. <coughs> and uh, hopefully the kids are going to get out there. And st I, I think they've been selling some, but we're having to push. You know, really, you have to, you know, the deadline soon. October 21st is the deadline, so. Um, I think they're starting to pick, pick up on the fact that it's really important. Then we have a pre-holiday season basket raffle, which is more of an individual incentive-based uh, program whereby the, the, the more the kids sell, the more it can take off their own price. So we have those two things in place. Um, some of what we raise in the fish fry actually goes to the kids who stay back. Whatever number of kids do stay back, they have design kind of a week-long special program for them that involves a couple trips, sometimes a virtual tour of DC. So inevitably there are some kids who stay back for one reason or another. We don't want many to stay back. We don't want any to stay back, of course, but uh, part of the scholarship fund, that fundraiser is used for that week for the programs that we do here as well. Um, anyway, uh, we're excited to do it. We hope we'll have your support again. We, my own kids go to a school where they don't get this amazing opportunity, and I'm just proud to work here, proud to be able to uh, bring these kids on a bus down here, live with them for a week, and uh, uh, that's about it. Unless there's anything, uh, anybody thinks I'm missing, or if you have questions, by all means, happy to speak about those. I make a motion to second it. <laughs> Any further discussion? All those in favor? Thank you very much. Thank you. Are you taking Bob with you as a chaperone? I, I, I think I'd like to. You think you want it? <laughs> I'm sitting somewhere else in the front seat for a change. Yeah, really. <laughs> Thanks for continuing ah, the well, tradition. It's a great is thing. Is this I, your first time? I've been ten, about 10 times oh, myself okay, so. over the years, but I've never. Season. Yeah, but I've never had to sit at the big kid table before and yeah, to, yeah. to talk about it in front of you folks. Yeah. But I'm psyched to get back to it. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Um, so now a gift of $13,000 from a general collection of various community supporters, both businesses and private, for the purpose of repairing the softball and baseball dugouts. I'm going to have so a presentation. I have David Fatel here. Here I am. Yes. Hi, everybody. Thanks Hello. for having me here. I'm David Fatel. I'm a teacher here at Frontier. I'm also one of our baseball coaches as well. So this past year, as we uh, went around to some of our area schools and played teams, and we did very well, actually, we appeared in, uh, in the Western Mass Finals this year, and we noted that many of our uh, schools in, in the district had dugouts, both in the baseball and, uh, and softball fields. So, you know, we began to talk all our coaches together and said, wouldn't it be great to uh, get some dugouts here in our fields? 
Um, you know, we start out in late March and it gets cold, windy, even a little uh, rainy and snowy, and the kids are out there. And then we play all the way through graduation where it suddenly gets hot. And uh, we had a couple of uh, situations last year where, uh, you know, kids were getting a, a, a little uh, under the weather due to the heat and not having enough uh, water and so on. So we said, great to have dugouts. So we understand the difficulties in raising funds to a school budget. So we formed what was called a, uh, a committee called the Friends of Frontier Baseball and Softball. And on that committee was myself, uh, Carrie Fiden Cabas, who is, uh, had four kids who are running through our schools and owns a Deerfield Pharmacy and is our softball, softball varsity coach. Uh, Chris Williams, who is a, a graduate of the school and he is our varsity baseball coach. And uh, Brett Guanta, who has two kids, the seniors graduating this year on our team, and who is director of operations for Deerfield Academy. So in doing a bit of research, we found out and looked at some of the dugout uh, situations here in the area and found that Deerfield Academy had very graciously donated labor to the construction of dugouts that you see on Memorial and at the base of, uh, of Mount Sugarloaf. And I said uh, to Brett, uh, would it be great if we could duplicate that sort of effort, raise the funds for materials, and Deerfield Academy would supply uh, with uh, Brett Gawanta's guidance the labor. So we started a campaign uh, and we got you know, some of our coaches to generously and other key figures uh, on staff to generously donate money. And we went out to some of the area businesses and we had a goal of $13,000 because we had uh, quite a diligent uh, uh, discourse to determine what would be the cost of materials to bring in uh, for the four dugouts, two in the baseball diamond and the two in the softball diamond. And before we know it, a couple of months later, we raised all the necessary funds to do it, and we established a, a, an account in central office uh, called, again, Friends of, uh, of Baseball and Softball, and uh, we just met with uh, the principal and vice principal and director of operations, Bob Lesko, to develop the actual detail to when we would start and bringing the materials and so forth. And uh, let me assure you, if there is any negative variance for those uh, that understand negative variance to the course, we have everything covered financially. So uh, if we run over to, to some uh, incidental uh, uh, expense, I can assure you that we will be covering that expense as well. So um, one might say, why now when baseball and softball has been played for decades? on these fields besides that, you know, a lot of other teams are having it. And I think the answer is that there are so many great things going on right now in the school and the school district. And we feel that energy everywhere, you know, with new staff, new teachers, academic expectations, you know, getting up there. Our music program is growing, it's fantastic. We have a new, you know, information system that is just taking over and making all our lives easier. So it was sort of easy to say, let's just hitch another wagon to the train and just join the great energy that's going on. So we raised the money and we're ready to go. And in a couple of weeks, we intend to, if you will, uh, break ground. So we're just here to, you know, to explain ourselves and hopefully get your support to, uh, to go on with this project and change the landscape a little bit and uh, put some dugouts in for our kids. But we're not really, we're not repairing any. Pardon me? We're not repairing a dugout. We're no, we're not. It says repair, unlike the yeah. No, repair is not correct. We are bringing up from the ground brand new dugouts. The other, the other thing, Cindy, can I suggest in the vote that uh, we, we approve this, but not limited to just doing the softball and baseball dugouts. Uh, so in other words, if there's $10 left over, we don't have to go back to these friends and find out what we're going to do with the ten dollars. Like we have the light money sitting there, we can't do anything with it. I don't think we're going to have that problem, but I just want to cover my bases. So mm -hmm. why don't you make that motion, Bob? Okay. Uh, oh, wait a minute. Oh, yeah. No, go ahead. We have to make a motion. Go ahead. Okay. Move to accept the gift of thirteen thousand dollars for the construction of softball and baseball dugouts, but the money be not limited to do said work. Money is not limited to said work. Yeah, in other words, mm -hmm. uh, we, we want to spend. Why don't you say constructing and equipping, and then they can do what they yeah, have. Constructing and equipping. Yeah, okay. Just That's fine. That's fine. Because if, if there is any excess money, you know, you know, 
we'll, we'll we have ways. But we'll the work. thing we had was some code angles. We have a substantial amount of what was given to the light side, and we can't spend it. Right. <coughs> okay. okay. All right. That sounds good. Everybody understand that? Do the I have a second on that? Let Judy second. Yeah, I mean, I know. Come on. Judy, you want to second? Or do you want to second, or do you have a question? Or does this comments? does this request uh, meet with the approval of the? And there's no security concerns about no, what we can take place after dark and after schools closed. Right. No, we walked through and and and, uh, and with I Brett saw. and uh, the plans are good, and they're going to do a little bit more than just the dugouts. They're also going to do the warm-up mounds behind each of the dugouts and that's that kind of stuff. So that's a little extra. So I'm glad you changed the wording there. So some landscaping around we'll the dugouts as well. Yeah. And those who don't know, Greg Wanter um, from DA comes over and helps us with our fields, mm -hmm. uh, brings equipment that we don't have, and to help uh, do, some of, do some of the jobs that we don't have the equipment to do and expertise to do. So it's great to have them do that. Okay. All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you so much for the presentation. So that was thank wonderful. you very much for having me. Before we go on too, too much further, please. Uh, you we voted to accept some donations to the library quite some time ago. Do you know if that was ever uh, worked out? Mm, we're, we're, uh, Mr. Uh, Modesto and I just met with Mr. Mark uh, a week ago tomorrow. Um, and uh, the money is supposed to be, he would have to go back to his attorneys. We hammered everything out. He was going back to his attorney, you know, his, uh, his fund to get us a check cut, and we're waiting on the arrival of the okay, check. Okay, so everything's Hopefully any moment. going forward. That's what I'm just concerned should be going mm -hmm. forward. We're on it. Okay. Um, the collaborative? <laughs> Lynn? <laughs> on it. Okay. Um, I can read my notes. From the collaborative. Uh, a couple of years ago, they began a social justice and equity initiative. And there's a big conference on October 15th at HTC um, on transforming education for social justice. And they're, they've just got a huge assortment of professional development opportunities out there that people really should yeah. check into. It's really kind of amazing. Uh, they're doing outreach activities that include working with the 51 um, immigrants who are coming into Northampton. And so they've been working with the resettlement school working group. The, the what? Say that again? Sorry? What was the group called? Yeah. Awesome. The Northampton Resettlement School Working Group. Okay. And they're preparing for the 51 refugees. There's a presentation on the fight against question two, which you brought up earlier. Uh, there's a big conference in January on technology and education at HTC. And the earliest professional development opportunity coming up is best practices for supporting LGBTQ students. That's coming up in October, mid-October. So that's a good one. Um, I've got a bunch of material about professional development that's, um, that's available for the school year. It's really, um, it's broad and deep. They do a good job with that. Yeah, they do. With the professional development. Yeah. Linda, was there any talk about chapter uh, question two? Or yeah, we had a presentation <laughs> was right. um, from somebody from that. Okay. And I think that information yeah. was oh, said that. Boy, he, he was hard to hear. We have a boys, 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 boys. Principal, Sorry. thank you, then. All right, you have the principal report in front of you. I won't read it to you um, for time wise, but if there's any questions on it? Mm -hmm. um, I don't see it. I don't know. I, I walked around and handed it to everyone. You just brought it to you. Yeah. Yeah. Let's do it back. All right. Let's put it back. Hey, I do have a, I do have a uh, request that came to me, and I, it's not on the agenda, but timing-wise, I, I, I wonder if the chair will just allow me to do this. I had a request for a sick bank, um, a request to the sick bank, mm -hmm. and according to the, the uh, contract, the sick bank committee shall be created consisting of two instructional assistants. This is Unit C, mm -hmm. and two members of school committee or designees thereof. This can be fixed any bylaws are appropriate within the scope of the authority granted by the contract. So I need two members to serve on the sick leave bank for probably, this hasn't happened since I've been here, um, but for a quick, I would imagine be a quick, probably 30 minute meeting at some point in the next two weeks um, with two instructional assistants you know, before or after school. Is this, um, this is after school? 
before or after school, depending on when people get to meet. I imagine it'll be a short meeting. The request is very straightforward. Okay. And so, um, First, I'll ask it's not a lot of work. Years. Do you need two members? So we need two members, so either a point or volunteers. So I have one member over here. Does somebody else want to volunteer? I do, but I can't meet before school. So the after school, so when? The idea is that there's two instructional assistants, so close to this, the school time would be most. Right, so right after school. I have to get right two volunteers. School. School. So it'd probably have to be after school if Lynn's going to do it. She just said she can't wait before school. As long as we don't go to Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday. Well, that's something for you all to work out. So, um. You can probably bring the kids. Right. Do you know if that's an appointment or a vote or. I know I saw that in the um, contract, but I can't remember what it said. The sixth exam shall be created consisting of two. Um, two um, school committee or designees there are. So oh, designee would be an appointment. Okay. So, so I guess you just want to. Two school committee members are a designee. You oh, could say. I could say. She can do it for us because she's already here. Right. That's not that appointment. That, that's my. You know, I just want to know if we have to vote on it or if we appoint it. It could be anybody. It doesn't say whether I appoint or we vote. Okay. So let's just be safe. Can somebody make a motion? Let's vote the appointment. Somebody second it? Second. All those in favor? Unanimous? Good to go. Thank you, Darius. All right, thank you. For any questions on what we'll Okay, so moving along. I believe that's it. Yes, I just handed out the uh, enrollments for October 1st. That's all. Okay, yeah, they're in our packet. Yeah. And Good. so I need a motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn. Second. Second. All those in favor? We're out of here.